And now we welcome WNBA All-Star and Minnesota Lynx rookie Nafisa Collier. She rushed over here from practice. Just love that. <laughs> uh, really appreciate you making the effort. Welcome to the job. Now your friends Thank call you, you Fees. Yeah, uh, Fee, Fees, Fisa. There's a bunch. I don't know if we qualify, but we'll try. <laughs> um, you're 27 games into rookie season. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing great. You're putting Thank up you. great numbers. Went to UConn. Yes. Um, what is uh, what's the transition like been going from uh, a power program like UConn to the WNBA where you're doing mm -hmm. great? It's been pretty easy because I think the programs are so similar and I think that's why they both had so much success is because what they expect from their players is so high and so they get great results. All right, so I know you have some Gino Ariema stories then, right? I have a couple. <laughs> What's the best one you got? Uh, <laughs> the one that everyone likes the most is uh, one time it was snowing really hard so we didn't have a bunch of people at the game so it was okay. really quiet and I had done something where a coach is yelling at me, and he's like, Fisa! And everyone heard him, but I was like, guys, keep running. Don't look, don't look. <laughs> he's screaming my name like that, and I wasn't looking at him, and so everyone brings that up because everyone heard it. <laughs> now, one of the things that's kind of unique in the WNBA is the turnaround from college Ooh, to the season. Like that. Very quick. Really quick. And so when you're talking about the transition that you have to make, what's your process of going from UConn into professional basketball? Um... You know, it was really quick going from like the final four to the draft, graduating, coming to Minnesota. But those two or three weeks we have uh, before the season is kind of where you get all your kinks out. And that's where you're really learning new things. And especially moving to the three when I played the four before, um, that was kind of a transition, hard transition for me at first. So that's kind of where I try to figure that out. So you make the transition and make the all-star team in your first year. The only <laughs> rookie to make the all-star team. Mm -hmm. Replacing Asia Wilson, right? Mm -hmm. What was it like when you found out you were named that all-star team and all-Star Game in Vegas with Liz Cambage, who is one of the great personalities in WNBA. Yes, it was really fun. I was so excited when I got that call. And then uh, being with um, Liz, you know, seeing her trying to be a point guard, shooting those threes, getting yeah, her up. 6'8", really 6'8", trying to be a point guard. Yes, mm -hmm. backing people up, taking it full court. It was really fun. <laughs> now, you've said that, uh, I read a story the other day, that, that you haven't been too shy about the fact that you'd like to win Rookie of the Year. Mm -hmm. It's typically an award, the number one pick wins Rookie of the Year. I think nine out of the last 11 have. Mm -hmm. You weren't a high draft pick. So what would it mean to, to win Rookie of the Year being a lower draft pick? It would mean a lot to me. Um, it was the goal that I set for myself originally before the season started. Um, I knew that I could do it, and so I'd be in great company if I did it. And, um, you know, I'd, I'm so close. I'm yeah. <laughs> so your all-star coach, Bill, was Bill Ambeer, <laughs> yeah. and he made some headlines because he was really upset that they didn't provide first-class travel for the WNBA All-Stars to mm -hmm. Vegas. Can you tell us, for those of us who are involved, what is WNBA travel really like these days? Um, personally, I think our we haven't had any huge problems. Um, it's different from college because we used to charter, so we'd be gone like right after the game. You better travel at UConn than you have with the champion Minnesota Lynx. But like that's the reality of the current WNBA, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know a lot of other teams have had problems um, with their travel, getting things delayed, buses breaking down, things like that. Like I said, we have had we've been really fortunate this year. We haven't had any problems like that, but. Um, I think that's definitely one of the biggest things that people want to change, see change in the league. So the Lynx are a team that's really in transition after Lindsey Whalen retires. Mm -hmm. And how has, how has it been this year trying to redo this team and remake this championship team? Yeah, I don't have anything to compare it to because it's yeah. my first year, but having only three returners I know is probably really hard on them. But they've done a great job bringing everyone under their wing, making sure we know what we're doing, making sure that we know what the Lynx are about. Mm -hmm. So um, I think we're doing you know the best we can. And Do you have contact good. with Maya Moore? Is she around at all? Uh, I haven't seen her, no. Interesting. Yeah. Do you know if she's coming? Do, do you have a sense of whether she comes back? I have no idea. Huh. I haven't talked to her. Put her on the hot seat, Ramon. Yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> that's, that's what I want to know. When's she coming Always. back? Fisa, thank you Always so much for joining us. Thanks for really having really appreciate it. Congratulations on your great yeah. rookie year and have a great finish to the season. Hopefully, Thanks. you get Thanks that. For Thanks so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports analysis and highlights, download the ESPN app. And for live streaming and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.